In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about appendicitis, which is a medical emergency, including what it is, how common it is, causes of appendicitis, symptoms, and importantly, diagnosis, and finally, treatment options. So first of all, let's cover some basic anatomy and understand what the appendix is. So the appendix is a small, blind-ended tube that comes off your large bowel. In the vast majority of people, the appendix is located in the bottom right-hand quarter of the tummy. And this is important because this is one of the main sites of pain in people who have appendicitis. So now we know what it is, well, how common is appendicitis? Well, appendicitis is actually pretty common and it can affect anyone of any age, but it most commonly affects teenagers and young adults. And it's most common between the ages of 10 and 30. And although not unheard of, it is rare under the age of two. Now, it seems to be slightly more common in women than men, and it's more common in countries in Europe and the US, and that's thought to be partly due to the Western diet, which is often low in fiber. So what causes appendicitis? Well, appendicitis is thought to be due to either be caused by a blockage of the appendix tube, either by something being stuck on the inside or by swelling of the appendix wall. Now, the blockage might be caused by trapped seeds, food that you're struggling to digest or hard bits of poo that get stuck in the appendix or by lymph glands in the appendix wall which have swollen in response to signs of infection somewhere else in the body. Now if the appendix is inflamed and swollen and can't empty then harmful bacteria might thrive and cause inflammation in the wall and behind the blockage in the dead end of the appendix. If it's left untreated, the appendix can potentially burst or perforate, which can lead to potentially serious complications, which we're going to discuss later on in this video. And it's for this very reason that appendicitis is classed as a medical or surgical emergency. Now, in terms of symptoms, the common symptoms of appendicitis include pain, often starting as a dull ache around the tummy button, which then gets worse and more constant, sometimes over several hours, and then it moves or shifts across to the lower right tummy over an anatomical area called McBurney's point. Now, a few years ago, I made some clinical examination videos on physical examination signs that are commonly seen in appendicitis, which you can probably find elsewhere on this channel and they might interest you. So please do check those out after this video. Now, other people may feel sick or physically be sick. They might lose their appetite. They may have a high temperature. They may feel bloated or they can develop loose poo known as diarrhea. Now, whilst appendicitis is typically painful, the severity of pain can vary. The inflamed appendix becomes infected with germs from the intestine. Now, once it becomes inflamed, the appendix gradually swells and fills with pus. And eventually, as I mentioned, if not treated, the swollen appendix becomes weakened and it can potentially burst. Now, as I mentioned before, a burst appendix is very serious because the contents of the intestine, like your poo, can leak into the tummy. Here, they might cause a serious infection of the membrane that lines the abdomen, a condition known as peritonitis, or a collection of pus, which is called an abscess in the abdomen. So if appendicitis is suspected, early treatment is needed before it bursts, and if you've got symptoms of appendicitis, it's critical that you seek medical attention immediately. So what else could these symptoms potentially be? Well, some people develop abdominal pain that is similar to appendicitis symptoms, but which is caused by other conditions. So for example, an infection, a kidney stone or inflammation of the bowel. And in women, the symptoms could also be due to ovarian cysts bursting or even an ectopic pregnancy where a pregnancy develops outside the womb. In children, it could be a viral infection. So how is appendicitis diagnosed? Well, most often a doctor may diagnose appendicitis quite easily if you've got the typical appendicitis symptoms just by asking you some questions and examining your tummy. However, not everyone has got typical symptoms of appendicitis. Now, despite modern medicine, there is no easy foolproof test that can confirm appendicitis. For this reason, a surgeon often has to make their final judgment about whether or not to operate based on their clinical assessment. So, what should you expect when the surgeon or doctor examines your tummy? Well, they'll get you to lie flat on the examination couch or bed, and they'll push into the tender areas of your tummy to see if your muscles can relax and where you're most tender. They may also ask you to cough or lift your head off the bed, which will increase the pressure inside your abdomen to see if you find it more painful. They'll also probably do some blood tests to see if you've got raised inflammatory markers, so blood tests like CRP or ESR, and crucially, they'll do urine testing to rule out a urinary tract infection. And all women should be offered a pregnancy test to make sure that there's not something like an ectopic pregnancy that's causing the symptoms, because management will obviously be very different for this. 
The other useful investigation are imaging tests. So for example, things like an ultrasound scan or a CT scan, which might help to clarify the cause of your symptoms. If the diagnosis seems obvious or there's concern that your appendix has or is about to burst, you're likely to go straight to surgery without the imaging tests and that's to avoid any delays. Now, sometimes a surgeon advises to wait and see for a few hours or so whilst you're being monitored in hospital. Now, this allows some time to see if your symptoms progress to a more definite diagnosis or even if they change or go away. And during this time, antibiotic medicine will usually be given. Finally, what is the treatment of appendicitis? Well, the main treatment is surgery. The aim is to do this before the appendix bursts as a perforated appendix, as I've already mentioned, is very serious and it can cause a more widespread infection known as sepsis that can be life-threatening. In a surgical removal of the appendix, the inflamed appendix is found, cut off, and the first part of the large bowel called the cecum is then stitched up. Typically, antibiotic medicine is given before surgery to reduce the risk of infection developing at the site of the operation, and sometimes antibiotics are used to delay surgery until the appendicitis has calmed a little. This may make the surgery safer and reduces the risk that the appendix will burst during the operation. Now, removal of the appendix is actually a really common operation in the UK. Surgery is commonly done by something called a keyhole operation because the recovery is often quicker compared to having an open operation. Now, in a keyhole operation, this is performed through three tiny cuts, the largest of which is only around one and a half centimeters in size. Now, sometimes keyhole surgery isn't recommended and open surgery on the tummy area is performed instead, especially if the appendix has already burst. It's also more likely that you'll have an open operation if you have had other abdominal surgery in the past and you've got scarring. During the keyhole surgery, a blood vessel is damaged by the instruments and needs repair, so the surgeon will convert to an open operation. The appendix is not situated in the usual place or if you're pregnant. As with any operation, there is a small risk of complications. So things like bleeding and infection, as well as complications potentially from the anesthetic, and the surgeon who is operating on you will go through the list before you have surgery to consent you. So you'll usually be able to go home within 24 hours of uncomplicated surgery. You can expect some pain and often constipation, but these should improve within a few days. You should be able to resume your normal activities a couple of weeks after keyhole surgery. Now this brings us to the end of the video, and if you've made it this far, I've just got three quick requests. First of all, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it. Secondly, if you've got any questions, comments, or want to share any feedback, please do so in the comments section. And finally, please consider sharing this video with a friend, family member, or loved one. For more information, including extra resources, please check out the description box of this video, where you'll find lots more information from trusted websites. Finally, thank you for watching, and until next time, bye.